Hi guys, my name is Dan and I am the person behind this channel. This is the first time that I appeared in front of you, so let me formally welcome you to my channel. I'm gonna do a review about the recently concluded Miss Universe 2020, which is the 69th edition. I hope that I'm not too late though, because I know that it has already been 3 days after the coronation. As much as I wanted to do this right after the competition ended, I couldn't. After the show, I felt so tired and felt the need to rest and sleep. I remember not having any sleep at all on the second night of prior to the final show. Um, I have here my notes to guide me just in case I get swayed, which always happens. So, let's get this started. Um, I know that, as always, most of us have different opinions about the outcome of the show, so this is gonna be an honest review. Honest, but not brutally honest. There were things that went below my expectations as a pageant fan, like the production as a whole, but I'm gonna focus on the results. First off, the top 21. When I heard that the continental format has been taken out of the picture, I thought that it would be easier for me to choose my top 21, but it actually became harder for me. It was harder because, or not because of the format, but because there are a lot of strong delegates this year. In my Miss Universe 2019 predictions, 14 made it to the top 20, but this year, only 13 made it to the top 21. Yeah, that's kind of frustrating for me because I thought that I'll do better with my predictions this year. What happened? This is what happened. Choosing my top 21 was really, really hard. How many times did I say that it was hard? I love all the girls. I've seen their efforts. And if only I could put them all in the top 21, I would. But this is how it's done. And in the end, there could only be one winner. So I went on and carefully picked my top 21 and called them the best of the best. After the preliminary competition, I made a list of the standouts. We all have our favorites and some of my favorites didn't do as I expected during the prelims. And since I wasn't sure how the judges will choose their top 21, I re-evaluated the performances of the girl. I was like, this girl performed better, this girl is good in communications, but this girl is a crowd favorite. I was like that. I was weighing everything and I even did a point system. I think I wasn't able to save my final draft, but it looked like this. I gave one point each to those who did well in the preliminary swimsuit competition, another point for the preliminary evening gown competition, one plus or positive sign is equivalent to one point, the exclamation marks are for those who did an exceptional job. Before I explain further, let me show you my final top 21. Here they are. This is in alphabetical order. I have Australia, Bahamas, Belize, Brazil, Cameroon, Canada, Colombia, Dominican Republic, India, Ireland, Mexico, Nicaragua, Peru, Philippines, Puerto Rico, Romania, South Africa, Thailand, USA, Venezuela, and Vietnam. When the top 21 was announced, I was like, what? 
Australia and Belize have been two of my favorites from the beginning, and I was sure that they were gonna kill it once they walk on that stage. But for me, Belize did better in the prelims, and I felt sad that she didn't make it because she was on my top five. Don't get me wrong, guys. I was glad that Australia made it to the top 21. I must say that the result is a game changer, and I was really shocked, especially with the non placement of South Africa. In the past, the representative of the reigning queen's country was most likely to survive the first elimination and would go as far as the judges could place them. I must admit though that I didn't like how Natasha performed in the prelims. Again, please don't get me wrong, I love Natasha and I know the caliber of South African delegates, that's why I also included her on my top 5. Cameroon also didn't make it to the top 21. I was thinking that she would, since this is the first time their country participated in Miss Universe. And she was good in the prelims. These are the other 8 countries that made it to the top 21. They weren't on my final predictions, but 6 of them were included on my list of standouts. In other words, they were among my choices because they did well during the prelims. Bahamas, Ireland, and Venezuela were on my list. For me, they did great on the prelims. Unfortunately, they didn't make the cut. Romania. Huh? Seriously? She's actually my top two. I mean, look at that. Not to mention that she was Miss Supranational 2017 second runner up and Miss International 2018 third runner up. Yeah, she's that good. Um, guys, I bet you noticed that my voice is getting worse, and before I start to completely lose it, I'll be needing my notes so that I can make this a little bit faster, and of course, I'm pretty aware that you're getting more and more bored with what I'm doing here. Okay, so I was trying to find out where the judges face their decision, but I couldn't distinguish either. I think that the better, best explanation would be they saw something or things which we didn't see. I mean, us who are watching from home, there were times that I hated the cameraman. So if any one of you who are watching this, who watch the show live in the seminar, I'd really appreciate it if you can share your thoughts in the comment section. Please enlighten me. In the meantime, let's proceed to the top 10. Let me show you again my predictions. South Africa, Romania, and Belize didn't make it to the top 21. And out of the 7 girls left on my list, only 4 made it to the top 10. That's Puerto Rico, Mexico, India, and Thailand. Guys, again, if you are hearing the roosters in our neighborhood, let's just try to ignore them. Yeah, they're starting to yell at me, and I don't think that they're gonna stop anytime soon. Okay, so USA and Philippines and make it. They were on my top 10 because I was expecting that we, they would give us something exciting on the finals night. But I saw the same per performance that they showed us during the prelims. Energy. Yeah, I think that's what's missing. Seeing who's for me right now. Nonetheless, I love those two girls, of course. The big surprise for me was Jamaica. Okay, you go girl. Also, it was nice to see Australia and Costa Rica entering the top 10. 
here comes the top five. Again, let me show you my top five prediction. Puerto Rico, Romania, Belize, and South Africa are out. Puerto Rico made top one. OMG, I predicted her as the winner. I must admit though that I wasn't impressed with her styling during the top 10 evening gown competition. I'm not sure if it's the hair, the makeup, the gown, or all of them. Time check, it's 5 o'clock in the morning here in the Philippines right now, and I'm starting to hear a lot of noise. People and animals are starting to wake up. I live in the province, and I don't know with you guys, but for us, it's normal to hear the sound of almost every animal that live around here. Do you think they're gonna stop me? No, because I'm determined to finish this right now. So please bear with me. Okay, India. Oh my Adeline. I was so glad to see her entering the top 5. Right from the moment that she landed her feet in Seminole, she started to give me that wow factor. I loved how she was taking the competition to a whole new level until the final statement. I felt really sad because I knew that she got a bit mentally blocked and that she could do better. She was one inch away from the crown. Well, it happens and it happened. Moving on, yeah, let's move on because heartbreaks are part of our lives and they aren't good for us, so we need to move on. What did I say? I'll be skipping the question and answer around because I know that the girls try to give their best. Oh, I want to commend Brazil for speaking in English during the Q&A and final statement and she did well. Also, it was a good move for Mexico to use her native tongue during the final statement round. Now let's talk about the final look. I didn't like the setup for the final look. I prefer the conventional way where each finalist is given a solo moment to walk on the stage and give their last impressive look. Finally, the announcement of winners. I was still hoping that India will be crowned as the Miss Universe, despite what happened in the final statement round. Not being biased, and it's not about favoritism, racism, or what have you. It's just that I was thinking that what if it's her destiny? Well, it wasn't. Okay. The Dominican Republic was announced as the fourth runner-up. India 3rd and Peru 2nd, no issues with that. I, th I thought Julia's gonna win. I was uttering her country before Mario announced the winner. I was like, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. Then Andrea was crowned. Again, no issues with that. I actually originally have Mexico on my top 3. Let me just show you the original thumbnail of my top 21 prediction. There she is, together with Puerto Rico and Romania. Truly the best. I guess that's it for me. If you are still watching up to this point, thank you so much. You know the drill guys. I just restarted this channel, so I'd greatly appreciate it if you will subscribe. Also, I'd love to interact with you, so feel free to leave your comments. I always welcome constructive criticisms. Let's forget about the destructive judgment. Thanks, and hope to see you again next time!
That's a rat. 